12 terrifying backstories of Cenobites that never appeared in any Hellraiser movie. All you Hellraiser fans out there are familiar with the sadistic and demented entities of Hell, the Cenobites. You have seen them doing unspeakable things to their victims, and the Hellraiser movies have marked their territory firmly in the horror genre, courtesy of these demented creations of Clive Barker. They could be summoned by the mortals if they solve a puzzle box called La Martian's Box, and as high priests of hell, their job is to get the worthy souls into hell. These victims would then be subject to inhuman pain and torture for all eternity. Only the most depraved and misguided mortals will seek them out purposely, and once they do, there is no escaping. The Cenobites take pleasure from their torturous actions, and such mutilations and carnage actually swell their ranks. The damaged souls that seek them out usually seek pleasures that only the purest of evil can provide, and when the torture begins, no one hears them scream. In this video, we have brought to you some of these terrifying Cenobites that you haven't seen in Hellraiser movies. The mythology stretches beyond the films, and it is time we introduced you to the darker side of the Cenobite world. The next time you get your hands in a strange puzzle box, just leave it alone. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Sculptress. Sculptress got her name for a reason. She could sculpt and manipulate flesh like no other, and she made it into creative artwork. This dedicated Cenobite loved her work, and she also had the spooky appearance for the job. With her pale white skin and red eyes, she looked like a haunting demon from hell, and she had a set of knives instilled in her fingers. Sculptress was also quite the seductress, and she wore this revealing dark green leather dress that was somewhat different from the other Cenobites. She specialized in her uniquely perverse work of art, and she always had a ready supply of flesh to carve. Her admirer or follower, the delivery boy, always ensured that she had a steady supply and he kept bringing her fresh meat. One day, he got her a man who solved the puzzle box and this man was taken to hell to suffer from the unforgettable experience that came with it. His worst and wildest desires were brought to life and the sculptress had a special thing for this man. She referred to him as my sweet and conducted her artistic mutilations on his body. First, she severed his body in half and his upper torso was hung up using chains. She even cut out a heart-shaped chunk of flesh from his chest and it seemed to please the victim in some demented way. He started feeling unconditional love for her, and he hoped that he got to meet her sooner in life. Although his treatment in hell was far worse, he considered this torture to be no bother. However, my sweet did not have the sweetest experience when he got to know about her relationship with a delivery boy. She also took parts of his body, such as his tongue and pancreas, and she used them for her new project, the creation of Mr. Shine. Mr. Sweet could no longer speak to her to convey his feelings, and things got worse. When she used his lips to kiss the delivery boy, she even even made love to the delivery boy in front of him, and this broke his heart. If this wasn't torturous enough, she slowly used up all his body parts to use them on her other projects. Art cannot wait for this demented Cenobite, and the sculptress had all the traits that can make you squirm in your seats. Clown. For many, clowns are scary enough, so you can imagine what a clown Cenobite would be like. This particular Cenobite has a clown-like appearance, but do not mistake him for the other clown Cenobites in hell. He ranks higher than them, and his viciousness is second to none. During his mortal life back on Earth, he hosted the Mr. Winky Dink Show. His life changed after he solved the Lament configuration, and he was taken to hell for the treatment reserved for such souls. He was tasked with entertaining a group of children in hell who were too innocent to truly be damned. He tried his best to entertain the kids, and he organized a twisted version of the show he hosted during his life. He started off as a pseudo-Cenobite and has two faces. His outer appearance suggests that he is a smiling clown, but looks can be deceptive. When his other face is revealed, we see that he is miserable with his life. The second face looks like a sad old man and shows the pain that he has to deal with. The extent of his torture can be observed from this one instance, when he tried to perform a simple magic trick for the children in hell, and as punishment, Leviathan rips out his guts as a warning. The clown must keep performing till he finally gets his act together. 
Well, eventually he does. He is turned into a proper Cenobite and we even see him getting one of the victims to hell after he solved the Lamin configuration. This time he has chains hooked to his forehead and he has a permanent smile glued to his face. In this transformed state, the clown is even more ruthless. His Cenobite pet was showing signs of compassion when he went to get the man to hell and the clown destroyed his pet for such feelings. He is scarier than the scariest of nightmares and the clown is a great example of just how psychotic and delirious the Cenobites can get. Hunger Hunger is creepier than he is intimidating, but that doesn't make him any less scary. This ridiculously thin Cenobite has pale bluish skin and a bald head. He dresses up in a tight leather suit that is covered in spikes. His outstretched mouth is weirdly outstretched, and his sharp pointy teeth together with his threateningly wide eyes make him one of the strangest looking Cenobites out there. Hunger usually goes by the laws set by Leviathan, but there are times when he goes beyond his authorities. According to the rules, a Cenobite can reach out to those that summon them, but hunger has often extended his reach. On one occasion, he is summoned by Fuerza de Dios while he is in a ship in the middle of the ocean. Hunger arrives and goes after the remaining crew as well until they all decide to set the ship on fire to send him back to hell. He shows absolutely no signs of remorse and this has ensured that he has an ever increasing number of Cenobite pets that are made from all the discarded corpses. There is another instance where a man was scared out of his wits at the sight of hunger. He trades his brother's life for his own and Hunger agrees to the offer. He makes a Cenobite pet out of the man's brother and this is not the usual Cenobite behavior. In all the stories surrounding Hunger, it has often been noted that he doesn't exactly play by the rules. When a man named Vincent summoned Hunger after suffering from leprosy, he simply wanted to become a Cenobite. As an offering, he decided to sacrifice the nurse that looked after him. Hunger did go ahead with the offer, but he also ensured that the Cenobites go back for Vincent one more time. This time, the nurse has been transformed into a Cenobite pet and Vincent is brought back to hell as well. We have seen many other unexpectedly brutal cases where Hunger has shown his vicious side. The comic series that features him has some unpredictable tales of his actions, and they are enough to strike fear deep within your hearts. Abigor. The Hellraiser comic collections have some terrifying Cenobites, and Abigor ranks very high among them. She is a mysterious character because not much is known about her past life. She is the sister of a fellow Cenobite termed the Female Cenobite. There are a few speculations regarding her origin, and one of them suggests that when Leviathan saw her for the first time, it tasted desire. Other theories suggest that she was Queen Cleopatra, while some others feel that she was the Helen of Troy in her human life. However, all this does not matter any longer because currently she is nothing but a fierce yet alluring Cenobite. Blemmies are demonic creatures in hell that are well versed with the nuances of pleasure. Abigor was initially one of them before she was summoned to sort out the chaos in hell. She was drafted into a group that included the likes of Atkins, Pinhead, and a few other influential Cenobites. Her tryst with the minister of Volksland showed just how unforgiving she could be. After she was summoned, she promised him to create order in Volksland. While sealing the deal with a kiss, she mutilated his face. She has proved time and again that she is loyal to Leviathan and she has never failed its assignments for her. Her revealing leather outfit might be tempting, but you are soon reminded of her whip with hooks and her razor sharp fingernails. She also has spikes on top of her skull that sometimes make her look like a female version of Pinhead. One of her main powers is that she can lure men into obeying her and slowly turn them into her slaves. While she does seduce the male victims, Abigor never allows herself to be distracted from her rightful conduct. She has never been shown to be ripping off the skin of her victims with her sharp nails, and her methods of torture are as deranged as some of the most disturbing Cenobites. Grillard Grillard is one of the ancient Cenobites and he has been around for over a thousand years. The first appearance of Grillard dates back to the year 1223 and since then this disfigured Cenobite has established a reign of terror. His head has been split up and then stitched back together and the unnatural disfiguration of his face makes him look all the more scary. He has a lumpy and bulbous body and there is a corkscrew that goes through his nose. Hooks are attached from his mouth and they connect his exposed chest. It is often believed that he was the one who transformed Sister Nicoletta into the female Cenobite. The story surrounding Grillard showed his twisted ways and you have to go back in time to learn about his antics. Back in 1220, Count Carillion went on a crusade with his army and during his quest he recovered a puzzle box. While he was gone, he left his kingdom in the hands of his wife Lady Carillion. The head of Castle Carillion's parish, Father Robitaille, warned her about a terrible dream that he had. 
he saw that the Count was about to bring home something satanic. When the Count returned, he was disappointed about his loss in the crusade. He was unaware that in their efforts to ward off Satan, his wife and the parish had summoned Grillard. By the time he realized, it was too late and he was taken to hell by the ancient Cenobite. After he was gone, Lady Carillion and Father Robitaille continued their fight against Satan, but eventually they gave in to the temptation as well. Lady Carillion was impregnated by Robitaille and they solved the puzzle box again. Grillard arrived once more. This time, Count Carillion was returned in the form of Lady Carillion's baby, and she was taken to hell along with Robitaille. Later, Grillard also approached Carlos, who was a leader of a gang. His desire had called in the Cenobite, and the torture with hooks and chains was as harsh as it gets. Face. Some collect stamps, others collect rare coins, but this particular Cenobite collects faces like it is some harmless hobby of his. In his human life, he was an actor named Lou Shanny who made quite a name for himself with his realistic masks to portray various characters. When he had a role in Oliver Twist, he had a desire to take the face of a man named Fagin so that he could execute the role better. Such dark desires are never missed by Leviathan, and he noticed Chani and decided that he could be a capable Cenobite. Pinhead helps him to get the face of Fagin, and this only emboldens him further. Later, when he had to play Quasimodo, he killed another man to steal his face. However, when he proposed to his love interest, he was shocked to learn that she had already committed to one of his colleagues. In anger and disgust, Shani burns the man's face with sulfuric acid, and when he tries to flee, he is confronted by Pinhead. It was time for him to transform into a Cenobite, and Shani was taken to hell to be made into a Cenobite. Or Face. Face is also one of the very old Cenobites, and he has no skin. The appearance that we see is usually one of the faces of his victims that he has taken off. As a Cenobite, he is almost immortal, and all he does is torture the damaged souls by peeling back the flesh around their skull. He goes around wearing a leather suit, and he has amassed a huge collection of human faces by now. Besides the face, he also takes off the skin of hands from the victims and uses it as his gloves. He has a face for every occasion and uses something as twisted as a person's face for aesthetic purposes. There are some haunting stories of face striking a deal with mortals, and his tales of torture might give you a few sleepless nights. Spike most of the Cenobites were extremely unpleasant men in their human lives. Their sadistic ways simply got carried forward when they embraced the life of a Cenobite. Such is the case with Spike, who used to be a cruel man during his life. He was a railroad worker by the day, but he secretly forced himself on little girls and tortured them. He would impale these little girls and took pleasure in his morbid acts. When he solved the Lamech configuration one day, Pin had appeared to take him to hell and turn him into a Cenobite. In an appropriate treatment to him, he was impaled through the head, and as a Cenobite, he had none of his sensory faculties working. He was also not capable of communicating normally. The designs of Spike are strikingly similar to that of Pinhead, especially his leather suit covering his entire body. Besides having a large golden spike through his head, his facial skin has also been mutilated. He wears a metal helmet and the top of his head is visible, allowing us to take a look at his cracked skull. Spike was all set up to appear in Hellraiser Deader, but the scenes were finally deleted by the director because he felt that these would be a bit too inappropriate. However, Spike is still a popular Cenobite because of his multiple appearances in comic books and fan films. Most of the Cenobites have shocking appearances, but Spike certainly takes it a step forward with his hideous and grotesque mutilations. Markova She might have a skeletal horse snout stitched onto her face, but she was still the love interest of Pinhead. Markova sported a revealing leather outfit and a stylish mohawk hairstyle. There have been several instances in the comic series that show that Pinhead and Markova cared deeply for each other. She was one of the Cenobites who was present at the call to arms. She was summoned by the general and led five others to fight the Harrowers. The Harrowers were trying to free the goddess Morte Mam, and the group of six Cenobites, led by Markova, was called the Lucky Six. There was a fierce battle that broke out, and both of her arms were hacked off with the Divine Axe. By the time the Lucky Six had arrived, Morte Mam had already been released. Now she was helping the Harrowers in their fight against the Cenobites. She even created a creature called Ovid that was supposed to infuse courage in the Harrowers. Very soon, all the five Cenobites, apart from Markova, were defeated and dismembered. Markova was terribly wounded, and a divine longsword was plunged into her stomach. Realizing that there was no way to win this fight, she fled to hell with a Harrower bunny Benedict. Pinhead was shocked to see her dying, and later he mourned her death and vowed to avenge it. 
Bunny Benedict was subject to unspeakable torment and torture by Pinhead, who had just lost his muse. The scantily clad, strange-looking Merkova was certainly a unique addition to the long list of terrifying Cenobites. Gehenna Back in his human life, Gehenna was a priest of Moloch, and he conducted some gruesome rituals such as tossing a child into a burning pit. He would do this every other day, and this was meant to please the deity he was worshipping. The only sign of mercy that he showed was when he slipped the children sleeping herbs so that they didn't feel any pain. However, even this was against the rules of the ritual. One day he got a rude shock when he found that his own son was up to be sacrificed next. There were other worshippers present that day, and they paid no attention to the Gehenna's protests. In fact, he couldn't even provide his own son with the sleeping herbs, and thus he was subject to extreme agony in the burning fire. This was a bit too much for him, and he eventually jumped into the pit himself and got burned to the bone. Leviathan remade him as a Cenobite, and this transformation helped him get over the pain of losing his son. Like most of the other Cenobites, he had no memory of his past life, but there was an instance where his past was revealed to him. A group of Cenobites called Alistair's Gash wanted to bring down the Nightbreed and retaliated against Hell. Gehenna was one of the members of this group, but he was one of the few who weren't killed after their attempt failed. Pinhead and Chatterer were tasked by Leviathan to bring down the Rogue Ones, and many of them were slaughtered. It was not known what finally happened to Gehenna even though he escaped death for the moment. It is not unlikely that he too was executed eventually. His Cenobite form was as hideous as you can imagine, with burned skin and spikes impaled into his skull. Gehenna had a special power where he could control and even generate fire. However, this did not imply that he could not be harmed by fire. His initial relations with Pinhead were cordial, even though they later turned enemies after his role in the rebellion. Alistair When Alistair was a human, he lived in medieval Italy and he was in love with a girl named Chalkis. She liked him as well, but for some reason she never reciprocated his feelings. Eventually, Alistair found out her secret. She was regularly abused and molested by her father and brother, and Alistair decided to teach them a lesson. He killed her brother, and they cooked the body and fed it to her father. Clearly, this was a candidate worthy enough for Leviathan, and when he landed in Hell, he was transformed into a Cenobite. He looked somewhat obese, and he had a golden arrow stuck in his skull. His head was surrounded by golden chains, and these were hooked to stretch his mouth wide open. Leviathan ensured that he would always be attached to Chalkis with a golden chain that was hooked to his waist. He wielded a lethal battle axe, and he dressed up in leather outfits just like the other Cenobites. He was the brains behind the organized treason called Alistair's Gash. The Nightbreed were viewed by them as a disturbance to their law and order, and they waged a daring fight to eliminate them permanently. Dumbsdayer's speech cast a spell of doubt in Alistair about Leviathan's protection methods, and this probably stemmed the seeds of treason in him. The group even had the courage to disobey Leviathan in the process, even though it meant that the forces of Hell wouldn't hit back with all their might. Finally, Pinhead and Chatterer were ordered to take down the rebellion, and Alistair was executed after being defeated. The Ferryman The Ferryman fought as a champion in the fighting pits of the Mock Coliseum organized by Harmon Taylor. Taylor was a crook of a politician and a demented human who bought a riverboat and converted it into a ferry. His idea was to capture black people in his midnight raids and they would be hauled on board. The woman faced extreme physical abuse out in the deep waters, after which they were thrown overboard. Taylor then organized fighting games and the men were forced to fight his champion, the ferryman. This man was so freakishly strong that he could crush a man's skull with his bare hands. Taylor even had twisted practices where he let the captured men run loose on a deserted island and then hunted them down. During one of these expeditions, Taylor came across a puzzle box and the following day, nobody except the child was found on board. They had all mysteriously disappeared after solving the puzzle box. All of them on board were taken to hell, and the ferryman was transformed into a powerful Cenobite. We later see him when he is summoned, and he rips open someone's chest and ties it to the steering wheel of the boat. The ferryman looks like a zombie on steroids, and he has hooked wire protruding from his shoulder. These hooks tear his own flesh, and two metal hooks are fitted in both his hands instead of the middle finger. In the stories, he wasn't exactly explored up to his full potential, but this could have been a mightily impressive Cenobite. Flagellum 
She is also known as the Watcher of the Order, and Flagellum is a female Cenobite who sleeps in meditation at the center of hell. She has no sensations whatsoever, and she remains in deep meditation while dreaming of the pure order of hell. Leviathan only awakens her in the greatest of emergencies because her services are essential to maintain order in hell. Back in her human life, Flagellum tried to be a virgin until her marriage. However, the wait for the right man ended up to be a bit too long and eventually she gave in to the temptations. She found out some uncanny self-pleasuring techniques that went beyond the usual battery-operated devices. In order to please herself, she resorted to some rather unnatural devices, and when she finally went for the services of Obsidian Rhombus Phallus, it turned out to be her downfall. Phallus killed her dog, and his perverted lust for violence did not end until he killed her as well. After her death, she was transformed into a Cenobite, and now she is a loyal servant to Leviathan. She is morbidly obese in her Cenobite form and has strange blue skin. Her tiny leather suit can barely contain her humongous body, and she has steel rods embedded in her skull. When the chaos is too uncontrollable, she is awakened and Flagellum restores order in no time. She has acquired some strange powers through meditation, and Flagellum can levitate using these powers. She can also foresee the future and change it in some cases. Because of her undying loyalty, she has a direct mental connection to Leviathan, and she could hear his orders directly and deliver them to others if required. These are only some of the many demented stories and characters created in the Hellraiser universe. There are many others which we hope to bring to you in our future videos. We guess it has been enough morbidity for one night. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.